Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. I did another video on the basics of JS8 Call a few months ago, but uh, several things have changed and moved around and the uh, program has progressed. So I wanted to revisit that subject today. Now this video is not going to be about how to get uh, your sound card and your radio configured or rig control or anything like that. It's just the basics of uh, getting the program set up the way you want it and how the program functions. So let's dive right into that. What you're looking at is the primary screen of JS8 Call and let's go through uh, a few of the basics. So the first thing you'll notice is up here in the top left hand corner, this is uh, the frequency that you're sitting on. And below that is the offset where you're sitting in the waterfall. So if I move this over here, you'll notice the offset in the waterfall changes. Now you can change uh, your frequency by simply clicking on this and choosing a different band. Uh, so if you have a rig control set up, uh, it, your radio will go ahead and follow whatever your choice is here. Right here in the middle uh, of the top black bar, you'll see your call sign and then your grid locator. Uh, you'll see the current time and date. To the right of that, we've got a few control buttons right up at the top. Uh, now you can turn each of these on and off. Uh, so if you don't want to receive anything, you can uh, click this one. It'll turn gray, indicating that it's off, or green, indicating that it's on. Uh, transmit, you can't click on, uh, but it will turn red when your rig goes into transmit mode. Uh, tune is pretty self-explanatory. It just sends out a constant tone so you can go ahead and get your antenna tuned up. The spot button is something that I recommend you leave turned on if you have an internet connection. Uh, if you're in the field, uh, not a problem to go ahead and cut that off. Uh, but if you're, if you're connected to the internet, go ahead and leave that on. What that's going to do is if somebody sends out their grid locator to all call uh, and you have everything set up correctly, then you will go ahead and spot them to PSK Reporter and to the APRS system. The next button is Auto. When Auto is turned on, your station will respond to automated commands sent out from other stations. Uh, one of these commands is a signal to noise uh, report. So if somebody uh, sends something to your station asking for their signal to noise uh, ratio, then if this is turned on, your station will auto-respond. Uh, if you're in a QSO, I would recommend that you go ahead and turn this off because you don't want your station automatically transmitting uh, a automated command back out when you're trying to listen uh, to the receive signal from the station that you're in the QSO with. Next over here is the logbook. Uh, so if you click on that, it will bring up the logging software where you can log your QSOs. All right, in the middle section of the application, we've got the band activity. So you'll see any signals that you're hearing and decoding popping up right here, whether it's directed to you or whether it's uh, just another QSO going on, it will populate into this window here. The center tan box here is where your incoming and outgoing messages will appear. And messages will populate in this window under three conditions. Uh, if you're lined up with another frequency on the waterfall, then you'll see the messages get decoded here. If the message is directed to you, even if you're not lined up with them on the waterfall, it will also populate here. And then anything you transmit out will also populate in this tan colored window. The box right below it is where you will type any outgoing messages. And the box over to the right is the call signs that you've heard. It can also contain some special call sign called call sign groups. So that's what this is. You see the at all call. Uh, that's here by default. And then I have a couple more here that I have added to it. Uh, so this one is my local club. This is what we decided on uh, to use there. And then another local group that uh, I belong to. Now before we get into the row of buttons here, let's take a look at some settings. So under File and Settings, we want to look at the General tab and then the Station tab. So here's where you enter your call sign and your grid locator. Uh, the call sign groups that I referenced over here that I've added, if you want to add some of those, maybe you got a group in your area uh, that you want to stay in touch with, uh, you can add those call sign groups right here in this window and just make sure if you add multiples that they're separated with a comma. 
Below that box is a few station messages. Uh, first you'll see your CQ message, then your reply message, and then your uh, station message QTH and equipment. So these, what you type in here, corresponds to buttons down here on the bottom. So if you press the CQ button, this is what's going to be populated. So in my case, it's going to give me CQ twice, and then my four-digit grid square appended to the end of it. Just like the CQ message, if I click on the reply button here in the primary window, this is what will be automatically populated into my outgoing message box. And then the final button here, QTH, if you click on it, it populates what's in this box here. Now, while we're in the settings, let's take a look uh, at one other thing under the reporting tab. You want to go ahead and enable spotting to reporting networks if your station is connected to the internet. Now, that ties back to the spot button that we were talking about up here. The first two boxes you can leave at default. This last box here is your APRS passcode. Now, yours will be different from mine because my passcode matches up with my call sign. I'll leave a link down in the description below where you can enter your call sign to generate your own passcode. Uh, but if you've got that entered in and then someone sends out their grid to all call and your station hears it, then it'll go ahead and send that information to the APRS system. All right, so let's jump back to the main window. So to call CQ, you can simply click the CQ button and you will see that it auto-populated the information that I had typed in uh, in the settings. So I got CQ twice and then my four-digit grid square. Now, depending on how you configured your station in the settings, this may go ahead and auto-send as soon as you press the CQ button. I've got mine set so that even after I press the CQ button, it waits on me to press the send. So I'll go ahead and send that out. While we're talking about the send button here, this number in parentheses tells you how many frames you're getting ready to transmit. So this is only one frame, so it's only going to take 15 seconds to send out this CQ message. And during this demonstration, I'm using my mobile as the second station. So that's what you see populated right over here. It's KM4ACK slash M. And then my primary station here is KM4ACK. So after sending out the CQ, you'll see that I answered from my mobile station. So I get this box over here that highlights red. That indicates that a message is being directed to me. Now you notice down here the signal is over around 1600 on the waterfall and I'm actually lined up around 1400 on the waterfall. You don't have to be directly lined up with the other station as long as that message is directed to the other station. Now what I mean by directed, look right here in your type outgoing messages. When I click this call sign here, it changes to say type your outgoing directed message to the particular call sign that you've got highlighted over here. You can also click the deselect button to go back to non-directed messages. And here's a quick tip for you. If you're in a QSO, line up with the other station exactly on the waterfall and you can deselect their call, but everything still get decoded here in the TAN window. Uh, what that does is it saves you about 15 seconds on every transmit cycle by not sending out your call sign with every transmit cycle. But make sure you identify at least every 10 minutes. Now in this case here, we see a station calling CQ. Normally, this bar would be green if you haven't changed anything uh, in your setup. I just happen to have mine set to red when CQ messages come in. It's a little easier for me. So now that we see the CQ message, we can see what offset he was transmitted on how long ago that came in, and what noise level we heard that station at. If we want to answer that, we can highlight the call sign over in the right to direct the message uh, back to that station, and then click the reply button and the send. Again, you'll see here, this one's going to take three frames to transmit out, so a total of 45 seconds to transmit this message. Now let's take a look at another great feature of JS8 called the heartbeat. So this is your heartbeat button down in the bottom left-hand corner. If you right-click on it, 
you will set the frequency of how often your heartbeat goes out. I recommend around every 30 minutes. Anything else seems a little excessive to me. You can also come down here and say, send heartbeat now. Now, just because you've set your intervals here does not mean that your heartbeat is turned on. You have to left click on your heartbeat and you'll see the countdown timer once your heartbeat is turned on. So let's go ahead and take a look at the way that functions now. So we'll go ahead and just send out our heartbeat. Now, any station that can hear our heartbeat when it goes out, if they have their heartbeat on and they have their auto on up here, then they will automatically reply to your heartbeat and give you a signal to noise report. So you can see that my mobile station here heard our heartbeat 15 seconds ago and gave us a negative 23 report. My numbers are a little bit false, I think, just because my antennas are sitting so close together. I've got the radios turned all the way down, but I still think it's giving me some uh, false information. Another thing you'll notice over here in the call sign window is this star. The star indicates that this station heard me and I heard him. So using the heartbeat will help you out to see who else is available that might be able to start a QSO. Just because they respond to your heartbeat, though, does not mean they're actually sitting at their radio. They could have turned this on and it would be in an automated mode answering heartbeats and they went to grab another cup of coffee. Now let's take a look at some of the directed commands that you can use. If you come over to a particular call sign in your call signs window and you right click on one of those, you can come down to directed to that call sign and you get several things here that you can do automatically. So if we just click on this one, it'll populate our outgoing message box and it's SNR question mark. That's going to ask the other station how well he can hear us. Now as long as the operator has the auto button enabled on his station and he can hear us, we should get a report back. Again, you can see this one's going to take two frames to transmit out. So let's go ahead and send that out and see what kind of a response we get. Now you can see the automated response coming in right around 1600 on the waterfall. And in just a minute, you should see that information populate right here, telling us that my mobile station can hear me at plus 10. There are several other directed commands that you can use, such as QTH. So be sure to play around with those a bit. Now let's take a look at leaving a message for another station. So if I want to leave a message on my mobile station, I'm going to right click, going to come down to directed to, and I'm going to come down to message. Please store this message in your inbox. And we'll just leave a test message. Actually, I'm going to make this one test one. This one's going to take three frames to transmit out, and we'll go ahead and click the send button. You'll also notice that it added a few extra characters at the end of our message. This is a checksum, and it's just used to verify the message on the other end. All right, and provided the other station heard your signal and got a good decode, in other words, a 100% decode, then you should see an acknowledgement coming back from that station saying, yes, I received the message in its entirety. Now, the other side of messages is when you receive one. If you receive a message, you'll see this pop-up window that pops up. You can also see my station is automatically responding that uh, it acknowledges that message coming in. Once you click the OK button, you'll notice a new symbol right here, the flag symbol indicating that you have a message. So what you'll want to do is right click on that call sign and click view message inbox. That'll bring up your messages that you've received from that station. And this is our last one that I just sent out from my mobile to the station here. So you can see that the message is test two. Now you can choose to reply to that or you can simply close the window. This is a really cool feature. Maybe uh, you just missed a friend uh, on the air, but you've got to run back out again. 
you could maybe leave them a message and say, hey, I'll be back in an hour or I'll be on at uh, 7 o'clock this evening or whatever. Uh, so messages are a really useful feature inside of JS8. And last today, I want to take a look at saved messages. Uh, so by default, the only thing you have in here is thanks, 7.3, and good luck. There's two ways to add messages uh, to this. First, you can click the Edit Saved Messages, and then you could choose Add and put in a new message. Another way that you can uh, go about that is before you hit the Transmit button over here, anything that you've typed into this window here can be saved. So you just click this, and you say Save the Current Message. Now, even after this is transmitted out, it will be stored here, and by clicking on it, it will auto-populate. So it's helpful if you're doing uh, kind of the same thing over and over again, maybe telling somebody what kind of uh, radio and antenna that you're using. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can use the Amazon link down in the description below. It doesn't cost you a dime, and we appreciate all the support. You can also find us on Patreon. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, 7-3.